walk into a home and feel the atmosphere. And you can actually feel very spiritual because you can perceive. You can perceive what's been happening. You can perceive the atmosphere. But very rarely do people own the fact that they can also create that atmosphere. That they, they can feel it because somebody created it. So if you can feel it because somebody created it, you can now be in the position of the person who can create it, create something different, create the holy home experience that someone's longing to feel, create the experience of the joy of being alive, create the experience of great appreciation for the people who you're with, who are in the room with you. I had the experience just recently of wanting to make things copacetic, happy, in a situation, but I realized I was going into the habit of making them copacetic as opposed to what really needs to happen here? Because I'm one of those people who grew up, you know, everybody has one of these in their family, I think, where you've got to keep the peace in the house. So you do whatever you need to do to make sure nobody's fighting, nobody's speaking loudly, nobody's getting hurt. And so when things come up in me where I think this does not feel good, I tend to go to, well, I know exactly what I could do to make this all go away. And then I stood in the place long enough to say, and is that really what's going to help? <laughs> Will it really make things better if I just make this go away? Or is it far more important for me to see what will make this right? What will make it right in me and what will make it right in the relationship? What will make it a more fertile, possible environment for life to, to flourish? So you can do whatever you'd like as a human being, but you cannot stop this life current moving through this whole planet and through anyone who's interested in it. Anyone who's saying yes to that is paying attention to that current. They have taken a breath. They know what the current of life would have them say. They know how to confess their greatness. I love that expression because people are terrified to say that they are great. It's a sign of arrogance or separation or putting yourself above people. The only way anyone else is going to discover that they're great is if a person in front of them is displaying their greatness because they're doing it in the humility of the home that's sacred to them, in the high home, the highest home, the inner place where greatness is natural. It is not then the power behind the throne, which they often say in stories of old when kingdoms and kings and queens were all part of the mythology and history. It is the power of the throne. It is the power of you sitting on your throne. And everyone has one. Everyone has a crown. Everyone has a throne. But if you don't willingly take your seat, willingly put on your crown, you'll be playing all over the kingdom trying to make things right. Trying to make people behave better than you think they are. As you step into confessions of greatness, you can also step into the reality that you are the answer to a lot of people's prayers. There are many people craving to be in the presence of someone who knows who they are so that they can figure it out for themselves. Not so that they can be like you, but so that they can figure out who they are and know that place of stability and radiance and warmth. When you're in the place of knowing who you are, when those waves come, you can experience them and know still the wonder of being, still know the wonder of the secret place, and know that the waves of grief are because you loved, not because you're failing. In this opportunity of being incarnate in this form, this being whose voice you hear through this body knows she came to serve.